Welcome back to my presentation. We will now turn our attention to point processes and how they can help us to quantify its spatial structure of univariate point patterns in more detail. Yeah, what is a point process model? It is a stochastic mechanism that generates point patterns with known properties. These patterns can be used as benchmark for better characterizing spatial structure in point patterns. Point process models also include the fundamental divisions and null models, but there is an important difference in their use. The task of a null model and of the fundamental division is to confirm that the observed pattern departs from the null model. That means we want to know if there is, a, is more spatial structure in the data than in the null model. But we can usually not describe this structure in much more detail. Therefore, the task of parametric point process models is to confirm that the point process model fits the data. In this case, we can use the parameters of the point process model as indices to more closely characterize the properties of the observed pattern. Yeah, in this lecture I will present only one example for point process models, which is however a quite important example which has quite wide applications, and this is the so-called Thomas cluster point process. The Thomas process is one of the simplest possibilities to generate realistic clustered patterns. It is a type of nested process, where points become clusters. So in the first step, we have a random pattern with an intensity rho, and this is called the parent generation. The intensity of parent points is the first parameter of the Thomas process. In the second step, the random points become clusters. They are indicated here by the circles of a given width, sigma, and sigma is the second parameter of the Thomas process. Now, in a third step, we place the points into the clusters. And this is done relatively to the cluster center by using a so-called kernel function. In case of the Thomas process, a two-dimensional normal distribution is used as kernel functions. Note here that some of the clusters overlap. So this cluster here and this cluster here is in reality very difficult to distinguish. The same thing happens here and here and all over. For this reason, it will be in general not possible to delineate the clusters by hand without fitting the point process model to the data. At the end of the process, we simply forget about the parents and consider only the resulting pattern of the offspring, as shown here. It is even possible to extend the Thomas process and to use the clustered points themselves as parent of a second cluster generation. In this case, we have so-called, say, grandparents points. These are the first random points. Then we have the parent points. This is a simple Thomas process. And then we have the offspring, which is a pattern that builds a type of double cluster pattern, where small clusters are nested into larger clusters. We will use this double cluster process to characterize the spatial pattern of the droppings of seed dispersing animals. Yeah, to summarize, the simple Thomas process follows basically two rules. The number of points per cluster follows a Poisson distribution with mean lambda divided by rho. Lambda is here the intensity of the pattern, so the number of points and rho is the intensity of the parents, so that means number of clusters. The second rule is that the distance from the points to the cluster centers follows a normal distribution with parameter sigma. 
So the simple Thomas process has two parameters, rho, the intensity of the cluster centers, and sigma, the standard derivation of the normal distribution, which gives the dispersion of the points of the cluster. I present this Thomas process here because it has a very nice property. This property is that we can calculate its percolation function analytically and even obtain a quite simple solution of percolation function. We even can calculate the percolation function of the double cluster Thomas process. And this allows for a very simple fitting of the Thomas process to the percolation function of the observed pattern. And to do this, we use a technique called minimum contrast. What we do basically in this technique is that we calculate the area between the theoretical curve and the observed curve. So, this thing here is the observed function. And this one here is the theoretical one indicated by the percolation function for the two different parameters. And here you see now the, the difference. And I vary the two parameters of this process as long as I find a parameter combination where this difference is minimal. For this reason is the minimal contrast. Yeah, so in the following I will show this approach for the example of the data of Jose using my software Programmita. Yeah, thank you for listening to the video on the Thomas process. In the next video I will continue with random labeling.